Are you in the market for a new home but can't decide whether to buy a more moderately priced, cheaper house and remodel it or go all in on move in ready? It's a tough call, but don't worry, we've got you covered. In this video, we're gonna break down the pros and cons of each option and give you some factors to consider when making your decision. Whether you're a DIY enthusiast looking for a fun renovation project or simply want to avoid the stress of home renovations altogether, we've got something for everyone. So sit back, relax, grab that popcorn, and let's dive into the age old debate on whether it's better to buy a fixer upper or go move in ready. Hi, my name is Andy with Living in Greater Boston. Every day I'm getting calls, texts, and emails from people just like you that are either looking to move to the Greater Boston area, they're looking to escape the city for some of Boston's awesome suburbs, or they're looking to get a great deal on a property for their personal residence or as an investment. If this is your first time on the channel and you wanna know everything there is to know about living in the greater Boston area, all of its suburbs, and what real estate deals you can find, then go ahead and subscribe. Tap that bell for notifications so that you can be the first to know about everything that's going on in the Boston real estate market and get early access to any deals that we may come across. So whether you're looking to make your move in the next nine or 90 days, Give us a call, shoot us a text, or send us an email. All of our information is in the description down below. If you're on the hunt for your first home, you might be considering a fixer-upper. These properties can be pretty tempting since they're usually priced lower due to the fact that they need some minor to serious repairs and upgrades. Let's face it, in today's world where saving for a house is a major challenge for most of us, affordability is a huge plus when it comes to fixer-uppers. Plus, if you're into those house flipping and reality shows on HGTV, you might see some serious potential for serious profits and building sweat equity that wasn't there with your own hard work and design ideas. On the flip side, the appeal of a move-in ready home is hard to ignore. After a long, frustrating home search, the idea of moving to a house that is ready to go doesn't need any work is definitely a relief. You won't have to worry about how much you'll need to spend on renovations, how long they'll take, which is always longer than expected, and that's a huge weight off of your shoulders. So what is the difference between a fixer-upper and something that's move-in ready? Well, so we take a look at fixer-uppers and we say, fixer-upper is basically a house that needs a lot of work or a little bit of work to make it livable by your standards. Like we're talking major repairs from fixing walls, replacing floors, or even putting on a new roof. Or it could just be some minor cosmetic stuff like a fresh coat of paint or some nice new decor. Typically not your traditional fixer up. Either way, you can usually score a fixer upper for a lot less cash than a comparable home that's already in good shape. Now there are a few different names for these types of properties. Some folks call them renos, while others go with distressed properties or fix and flip properties. And if you're into the whole flipping houses things, then you might refer to a fixer upper as a flipper house or a rehab house. So why would anybody wanna take on all this work? Well, for starters, fixer uppers can be a major money saver. If you're willing to put in the time and effort, you can end up with a seriously sweet home for way less money than you would pay for something move in ready. Plus, some people are all about that flipping lifestyle. They want to buy it, live in it, flip it, sell it for a profit. And at the time of this recording, and hopefully nothing changes, if you live in your primary residence for at least two years, when you sell that house, all of the capital gains above $250,000 if you're single or $500,000 if you're married are exempt from capital gains taxes, which means that it's basically free money. Now, let's take a step aside and put all this into perspective. Now, as a disclaimer, I'm not an accountant. And you should definitely consult with one before you embark on any of these strategies. If you're single and you're making $100,000 a year, after your federal taxes are taken out, you'll have about $76,000 before any additional state and local taxes are taken out. So for argument of this example, let's say you're left with $70,000 after all taxes. It would take you about three and a half years to make $250,000. Now I'll be doing a follow-up video to this one around the concept of house hacking. Let me know in the comments below if you yourself have done any house hacking 
or if you have ever thought about hack house hacking or don't even know what it is. If you don't wanna wait for the video, feel free to reach out. All of my information is in the description down below and we can have a chat about what house hacking is and how you can see all those gains, right? So move-in ready homes, you might have heard the term move-in ready tossed around when people talk about, about these types of houses. But it, let's be real, it's not always black and white. Like some so-called move-in ready homes might need a little few touch-ups here and there. You don't like the paint or you don't like the appliances right when you move in, okay? And you might need some of those, like some so-called move-in ready homes might need a few little touch-ups here and there before they're really ready for you to move in and start living your best life. That said, the basic idea of move-in ready is a ready home that is already in pretty good shape that you can unpack it. Maybe it's just been renovated or updated. Maybe it's just been meticulously maintained by the previous owner and it's just a little outdated. Either way, you shouldn't have to do much, if anything, before you can start hauling in your couch and making yourself at home. And if you're lucky enough to find a truly move-in ready home, you might even be able to start unpacking those boxes right when you walk across the threshold. No waiting around for contractors, no dealing with endless trips to the hardware store, just you, your stuff, and your new home sweet home. All right, so what are some of the pros and cons of buying a cheaper house and remodeling? Let's dive into what those pros and cons are. Now let's dive into the pros and cons of buying a cheaper house and remodeling. One major advantage is that you could potentially save a lot of money compared to buying something that's already move-in ready. Plus, you'll get the added benefit of being able to customize your entire house or parts of it to your exact liking. Want to knock down that wall and create open concept space? Go for it. Want to add that nice chef's kitchen that you saw on Pinterest? The choice is yours. However, there are some potential downsides to consider. Renovations are unpredictable. Now, as a licensed contractor, I know that renovations can be unpredictable. You can end up spending more time and money than you anticipated. You might have to also deal with unexpected issues such as outdated plumbing or electrical systems, which are a headache and just to add more costs. Renovations also require a significant amount of time and effort, which can definitely disrupt your daily life. So while remodeling a cheaper house can be fun and rewarding experience, it's important to weigh the potential cost and inconveniences before taking that plunge into your new project. So let's talk move-in ready. So one Big advantage of buying a move-in ready house is overall convenience. You simply walk through the door, unpack your bags and boxes, and without having to worry about any renovations or repairs, you're home. This option is especially appealing for those who lead super busy lives, have little kids, and don't have the time or energy to deal with the stress and hassle of of any home renovations. However, buying a move-in ready home also comes with its own set of potential downsides. For starters, obviously the cost is gonna be higher than compared to buying your, your so-called fixer-upper. Additionally, you may have to settle for a home that doesn't tick all of the boxes in your terms of style or layout. For example, you might not like the paint color in a certain bedroom or the fact that the kitchen is kind of closed off from the living room or the dining room. Ultimately, it's up to you. Whatever you decide is gonna fit your lifestyle and preferences best. While a move-in ready home can provide instant gratification, it's important to consider the potential drawbacks before making a decision. I'd love to hear about your experience with move-in ready homes and what you may have realized after moving in that wasn't really so ready. If anything like this has ever happened to you, please leave a comment below. All right, so now that we've explored some of the pros and cons of both options, it's time to talk about the factors you should consider when making the decision. First and foremost is your budget it is gonna be a huge factor, right? Are you comfortable with spending more upfront for a move-in ready home or would you prefer to save the money by buying a cheaper home that needs some work. Next up comes the timeline. How quickly do you need to move into your new home? If you're on a tight schedule, a move-in ready home might be the way to go. However, if you have more time to spare and enjoy the process of renovation, buying a cheaper house and customizing it to your liking could be super fulfilling and a nice experience along the way. Another important factor is your desired level of customization. 
Do you want to be able to design every detail of your home or are you okay with a few minor tweaks here and there? Finally, it's important to consider overall lifestyle. Do you have the time and energy that it's going to take for a renovation project or would you rather kick back and enjoy your new home right away? Growing up, my house was always in a state of constant renovation. A live-in flip, if you will, I guess. That meant working on the house at nights, weekends, even taking vacations or time off from work just so that my parents could work on the house. While they were able to build a ton of equity into the homes purchased, it didn't always leave a ton of room for anything else. Ultimately, it's a personal decision that depends upon your individual needs and preferences. So take some time to think about it and weigh all of your options carefully. Maybe you break out the work on your fixer upper over a few years and hire some professionals to handle the most of the heavy lifting so you still have some time for yourself. Remember, there's no real right or wrong answer. It all comes down to your personal preferences, budget, and lifestyle. Whatever you decide, just make sure that you take time to, to weigh all of your options and consider all the factors that are involved and we've discussed here. So that's it for today. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to hit the like button, subscribe to the channel, and tap that bell for notifications for more informative content like this. If you have any questions or comments about today's topic, feel free to leave them down below in the comment sections. We'd love to hear from you. Also, don't forget to check out our other videos for more tips and tricks and insights. Thanks again for your support, and we'll see you on the next one.